DaVinci Resolve 18.5 introduces exciting new tools designed to speed up your workflows and change how you approach your projects. There are a number of new AI tools when working in the studio version. You can now automatically transcribe audio in your media for text-based editing and in your timeline for instant subtitles. It's so easy. Simply select one or more clips in your media pool and then right-click and choose Transcribe Audio. The resulting dialog window will allow you to search for specific terms or jump to the section of the clip where a word appears. Mark in and out ranges, and then insert or append edits directly to the timeline. This could save you a lot of time when editing. Instead of listening to entire scenes or interviews, you can use the transcribe feature to quickly locate the topic you want the edit to focus on. Use the auto caption feature to automatically generate subtitles on the timeline. Create a subtitle track, and in the timeline menu, click Create Subtitles from Audio. Upon analysis, the transcribed audio will populate the track. Click the individual captions to modify them in the inspector. In the DaVinci Resolve Studio version, you can now use AI to classify audio clips based on their content, dialogue, effects, or music. To perform the analysis, select the audio clips, right-click, and choose Audio Classification Analyze. When finished, the clip's audio category parameter will reflect their classification. Beneath, the subcategory will assign additional keywords based on content. Open the new collections bins in the media pool to navigate audio clips based on their categories. The DaVinci Neural Engine Superscale, which is an AI processor, now has a new 2x enhanced mode for extremely high quality output when upscaling in studio. When selected, sharpness and noise reduction parameters allow you to further refine the upscale. As well as the clip attributes, you can now find the superscale settings in the inspector panel. The cut page has seen multiple improvements, from its interface and operation to the introduction of new tools. You can now create split edits simply by doing a roll edit at the lower part of a clip. The cursor will show an audio icon, which indicates it will roll the edit for audio only. This is a very fast way to create split edits. You can also increase the size of the audio track, which makes adding split edits easier because the audio track is larger. When the audio track is enlarged, the audio is displayed unrectified. The biggest changes are the addition of new menus to the left of the timeline. These are called Timeline Options, Timeline Actions, and Edit Actions. A lot of new features have been added into these menus. Plus, the Video Only and Audio Only controls have now been repositioned to the lower left of the media pool to free up space, while the most important timeline features are now positioned to the left of the timeline. One of these features is a new Ripple button that enables and disables rippled edits. In the past, the cut page always rippled edits, which means timeline clips would move with an edit point when a clip was trimmed. Now, with the Ripple button disabled, when you trim a clip, the duration of the edit will be preserved, and you can introduce gaps in the timeline. By default, Ripple is enabled. However, a great shortcut is to hold the Option or Alt key when doing an edit to disable rippling for that edit only. The Timeline Options menu is where you change settings that affect the view of the timeline. A good example is the ability to display clip names and status on the clips for quick reference. The Timeline Options menu is also the new location for timeline settings such as snapping, trim to audio, fixed playhead, and boring detector. This ensures that the main user interface has more space for controls that are used more often when editing. The Timeline Actions menu is for performing functions on the timeline, such as adding video, audio, and subtitle tracks. This menu also lets you automatically generate subtitles without leaving the cut page. Simply click Create Subtitles from Audio. Plus, in DaVinci Resolve Studio, you can now perform DaVinci Neural Engine scene cut detection directly on the timeline. Other features in the Timeline Actions menu are options for adding markers to the timeline and to set the default marker color. The new Edit Action menu has a new feature to trim the start or end of a clip to the current position of the playhead. When combined with the Ripple toggle, you can perform this action over media or a gap in the timeline. Another action allows you to quickly resync timeline video and audio clips. The Smooth Cut button in the Transition buttons has now been changed to a menu, so you can select other transition types. That means that you can right-click the menu to see your favorites. Once selected, the button will now change to that transition type, and you can use it again just by clicking the button. The Quick Export window now includes updates for uploading vertical aspect ratio edits directly to TikTok. 
This makes it possible to post cinematic quality color graded videos quickly. When editing with a keyboard, sometimes the smart indicator above the timeline was hard to see. Now, the automatic edit point has improved highlighting so it's easier to see which edit point will be affected when you trim or insert clips. In the edit page, when flattening a multicam clip, all color grades and effects will now be transferred to the underlying camera angles, preserving all the changes made to the clips in the color page. You can now use keyboard shortcuts to add and delete keyframes to video and audio parameters. Additionally, you can now modify keyframes during playback for even faster review. The Fusion page now supports universal scene descriptor files. The USD framework is a set of open 3D scene standards that encourages collaboration between artists, animators, and compositors. Fusion now supports importing USD data, including geometry, lighting, cameras, materials, and animation. A new collection of USD tools has been added to allow users to manipulate, relight, and render these USD files with the help of Hydra-based renderers such as Storm. Use the Multi-Merge node to composite and manage multiple foreground layers. In the Inspector, you can customize the layering and toggle visibility. Each layer has its own controls, so you can still change individual properties like position, size, and apply modes. In the Color Management Project settings, you can now choose whether to enable or disable tone mapping for fusion conversions. This can help solve unexpected tonal shifts that can occur between fusion and the other Resolve pages in wider gamut projects. In Studio, the native AI-based depth map tool is now supported in Fusion. Resolve color management can now be configured on a timeline level. Use the Timeline Settings panel to set a timeline's independent color properties for projects with mixed media. Corrector nodes in the Color Page Node Editor now feature composite modes. These will allow you to affect how node values blend into the pipeline without the need of a layer mixer. When working with color space transform nodes, you can now quickly swap the input and output color space and gamma parameters. The color page viewer now supports marker overlays and annotations for timeline and clip markers. Clips with missing lookup tables will now feature an overlay in the bottom right of the viewer to indicate the name of a missing LUT or state that multiple LUTs are missing. In addition to this, the LUT gallery will display a missing LUTs tab which allows you to see and manage missing LUTs. The new DaVinci Neural Engine powered Relight effect allows you to introduce virtual light sources into a scene with realistic surface highlights and fall off. First, drag the Relight effect onto a corrector node to generate a surface map. Add another instance of the Relight node to light the scene based on this map. Drag the Point Source Viewer overlay to change the position of the virtual light in real time. Use the parameters in the settings to determine the light and surface properties. With the relight map in place, you can now use the standard grading tools in the color page to relight the scene. There are two other light properties. Use directional to cast a broad light in a single direction. This is ideal for changing the time of day by imitating the behavior of natural light. You can also use the spotlight to cast a light onto a location, complete with cone and drop-off controls. The relight effect is further optimized when used together with other secondary grading tools. Use Windows to limit the area that the artificial light affects. Or Magic Masks to focus the light on a single person or object. In the Fairlight page, you can now create, edit, and mix groups to combine related audio tracks. To create a group, open the Index panel and click the New Group icon. Select the attributes you'd like the tracks to share and assign group members. Enable the group in the panel and start making changes to affect all the assigned tracks. Use the Groups panel to temporarily suspend groups, allowing you to change the focus of your actions from broader groups to smaller nested groups. Activate all groups at the top or deactivate to focus on individual tracks. In the Edit timeline, you can draw or edit automation across multiple group tracks at once. Groups also support editing operations, like moving or trimming audio clips. When using Elastic Wave to retime audio clips, So this is the launch button. That's what we control in the start, how much power we want. The new voice option offers natural sounding, high quality results when changing the speed of dialogue. So this is the launch button. That's what we control in the start, how much power we want. And there have been many improvements made to Dolby Atmos monitoring, including the addition of 9.16 and 5.14 formats and support for personalized HRTF binaural rendering. 
Other additions include Atmos re-render capabilities, 5.1 based real-time loudness metering, and 96 kHz master file support. In the Deliver page, TikTok has now been added as a render preset. To automatically upload videos upon render, first go to Preferences to sign into your TikTok account, and in the Render Settings panel, click Upload Directly to TikTok. You can also export to TikTok using the Quick Export dialog. When using Dropbox Replay, you can now upload new versions of a timeline and link them to an existing video upload. It is now possible to render GIF, JPEG, and PNG image sequences. On top of that, you may also render out animated GIF clips. It is now also possible to import and export timelines using the Open Timeline I.O. format. And you can now more quickly back up your work by enabling timeline backups in the user preferences. Modified timelines will automatically be backed up locally for both collaborative and non-collaborative projects on local, network, and cloud project libraries. DaVinci Resolve 18.5 features a number of remote monitoring improvements. You can now initiate remote monitoring connections using just a Blackmagic ID and a session code. This means clients will no longer be dealing with IP addresses and port forwarding. And in Studio, you'll be able to stream to multiple clients simultaneously, who will be able to view your output using the native video players on their computer displays. You can even remotely monitor on an iPad or iPhone. With DaVinci Resolve 18.5, you can also export your timeline to Presentations. Simply select File, Quick Export, then Presentations, and log into Blackmagic Cloud to export your video. With presentations, multiple people can review your timeline, make comments, and even share a live chat with others who are reviewing too. This was an overview of just some of the many new features in DaVinci Resolve 18.5. Thank you for watching.